Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N R. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 39. Day 39 out of the third edition, 3039. We are on page number 247. We are going to do two problems, two problems that you find that you will find on page 247. The first one is 2.7.8. 2.7.8. It's important that you have the book in front of you so that you can follow the work. If you read the problem 2.7.8, it uh, tells us that the apples cost 15 cents each. We are also told that the bananas cost 20 cents each, not 20 dollars, 20 cents each. We are further told that uh, on our shopping for the apples and bananas, we spend a grand total of three dollars and eighty cents. Money spent was three dollars and eighty cents, which we're going to express, which which we're going to express in terms of cents as three hundred eighty cents, and. We are told that we bought a total of 21 pieces of fruit was bought. We bought a grand total of 21 pieces of fruit, apples and bananas. The question simply is, how many bananas did we buy? And of course, in the process of finding out how many bananas we buy, we'll also find out how many apples we bought. Because once we know how many bananas we bought, the apples is going to be 21 minus the, 21 minus the number of bananas. Because we bought a total of 21 fruit. So let's get going, shall we? Let's get going. The very first thing we need to do, as always, in any word problem, is to define our unknowns. Unknowns here are the quantities quantities of uh, apples and bananas. So let A represent. So here's the solution. Let A represent the number of apples bought. And similarly, let letter B represent the number of bananas bought. The first equation that we have, we have, we're going to have to have two independent equations because we have two unknowns. We cannot simply say we need to have two equations because two equations need to be independent. If one equation is derived from the other, uh, then it's no good. If I tell you that x plus y is 5, and then I tell you that 3x plus 3y is 15, we won't be able to solve it because the second equation that I just gave you is just 3 times the first equation. That won't do. We need to have two independent equations in order for us to be able to find the two unknowns. And we do have two independent equations. So the very first equation is very straightforward, which is this part. 21, ap 21 pieces were bought. So that's very simple. 21 apple pieces were bought. So number of apples plus number of bananas has to be 21. That's very straightforward. Let's call it equation 2. Equation 1 comes from the fact that we spent $3.80. $3.80 and we know that we bought A number of apples. A represents the number of apples we bought and we know that each apple cost 15 cents. So that's 15 times A will represent the amount of money spent on apples, 15 times A in terms of cents, not dollars. For example, if we, bought, if we had bought two apples, we would have spent 15 times two, 30 cents on the apples. If we had bought five apples, 15 times five would have been the number of cents we bought on the apples, so on and so forth, 15 A. And the amount of money that we spend on, on bananas must be 20 times B. Because each banana costs 20 cents. So if you buy two bananas, it's two times 20. If you buy seven bananas, it's seven times 20. And that amount, the number of cents to spend on apples, the number of cents to spend on bananas, has to equal 380. Before we do anything else, let's reduce this equation. If there is a chance, if, the cha if, if there is a chance for you to be able to reduce the equation, any equation, you must always reduce it first because it creates less work. If you leave it the way it is, it's just going to be a lot of work. Let's divide this entire equation 
Let's divide this entire equation by 5. 15 is divisible by 5 and so is 20 and so is 80. 15 has 3, 3 fives of 15. 20 has 4, 4 fives. And how many fives does uh, 380 have? Don't look at me. How the hell do I know? Let's find out, shall we? How many fives does 3 have? 3 has no fives. 3 has no fives. That 3 goes and joins the 8 and becomes 38. And 38 we know has 7 fives. 7 fives are 35. 38 has 7 fives. 38 has 7 fives. After we take away 35, 7 fives are 35. After we take away 35 from the 38, we have a remainder of 3. What happens to that 3? That 3 goes and joins to 0 and becomes 30. And 30 we know has 6 fives. Well, there you go. There is our equation. There is our first equation. And there is our second equation. Oh, there you go. If you were to multiply second equation, either way, we can multiply the second equation by 3 and get rid of this 3, and get rid of this a, because if we multiply it by 3, it will become 3 and we'll be able to knock out a. Or we can multiply the second equation by 4 and we can knock out the b's. It really doesn't matter. Let's do it on the top. Let's do it on the top. It makes no difference because they are, they are not that complicated. They are both equally straightforward. Let's take the second equation, equation 2, which is right here, and multiply it by 3. If we multiply this equation by 3, what that implies, we're going to get 3a plus 3b plus 3 times 21. 3a plus 3b equals 3 times 21. 3 times 21, 3 times, 3 times 20 is 60, so it's going to be 63. And now let's write down this equation. Equation number 1 implies, this is equation 1, 3a plus 4b equals 76. I should have written this equation on the top because now we can end up with negative quantities. That's okay. Let's, let's subtract the second equation. And when I say second equation, I mean the equation on the bottom. Let's, let's subtract the equation on the bottom from the equation on the top. And when we do that, the very first thing we have to remember, this is plus, this is plus, the very first thing we have to remember is to change the sign. If you're going to subtract it, it's going to become negative, this is going to become negative, and this positive 76 is going to become negative. Positive 3 and a negative 3 are going to cancel each other out, which was the whole point, which was the whole purpose. Positive 3b and a negative 4b is going to give us negative b, and 76 minus 63 would be 6 minus 3 is 3, and 7 minus 6 is 1. It's negative 13. Therefore, B is positive 13. We must have bought 13 bananas. We must have bought 13 bananas. Well, if we bought 13 bananas, then we can continue here and figure out how many apples we have. Apples plus 13 bananas equals 21, which means apples we bought must be 21 minus 13. 21 minus 11 would have been 10. It's going to be 8. 1. And that's all there is. And if you wanted to very quickly verify our work, if you wanted to quickly verify it work, we can verify it right here. The equation is right here. We can verify it. Let's verify it, shall we? We must verify it. This only takes a second. 3 times a, and we are claiming that a equals 8. We are claiming that we bought 8 apples and 13 bananas, and we want to make sure that our claim is, in fact, correct. So we're going to replace 8 in place of a, and 4 times b, which is 13, and these two figures better add up to 76. 3, 4, 3, 3, 8 is at 24. And 4 times 13. What is 4 times 13? Again, don't look at me. How the bloody hell do I know? I know if you double 13, if I know if you double 13, you get 26. That I do know. And I also know that if you double 26, you get 52. How do I know that? Because if you double 25, we get 50. So therefore, if you were to double 26, you're going to get 52. Because instead of 25, you have 26. You have one more. Okay? So... Whenever you have to multiply something by 4, don't multiply it by 4, don't worry about it. Just double the figure and then double it again. If somebody asks you what is 17 times 4, just ask yourself what's, what are you going to get if you get double 17 and what are you going to get when you double that figure? That's what it is. So if you double 13, you get 26 and uh, if you double 26, it's 50, 52. Let's hope and pray to God that they add up to 76. Very good. 4 plus 2 is 6 and, and 2 plus 5 will give us a 7. Well, it checks out. It checks out. It works. Let's do the next one. 2.7.9. 2.7.9. By the way, if you're interested, if you're interested in watching the original solutions to these problems, 
these problems, all of these problems appeared in the first and the second editions in, uh, of the book. I'm holding in my hand the first edition. If you're interested in watching the original series, the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions to the same questions on day number 111 and 112. Instead of typing in GRE, instead of typing in GRE math day 3039, 3 for 3, the 3rd edition, just type in GRE math day 111 and 112. What we did there in two videos is what we're going to do here in one video. Let's do the next problem. 3 point, oh sorry, 2.7.9. 2.7.9. In 2.7.9, we are told that we are going to manufacture radios. We are told that we are going to manufacture, we are to manufacture radios. And we are told that the cost of manufacturing one radio is $30. Cost per radio is $30. We are also told that after we manufacture radios, we are going to sell them. And the number that we're going to sell is 500, that we are told. We're going to sell 500 radios. We are further told that we would require, we would require the profit to be more than 8,200. We're going to make 500 radios. We are going to sell all of the 500 radios. And the cost per radio we are told is $30. And we require a grand profit of 8,200. The question simply is, in order for us to achieve our goal of having $8,200 in profit, what must be the selling price? What must be the selling price for radio? Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. You can erase all of this thing from previous problem. We are done with all of this thing. Again, the first thing we have to do is set it up properly. Set up the proper properly. So, again, define your unknown. It's always important before you jump into it, you must define your unknown, define your variable here. The unknown of here, of course, is what is being asked here. What must be the selling price? Let the selling price be, here is a solution. Let the selling price be P dollars, P for price. I'm not, I'm not going to keep writing selling price per radio. It's understood that it's price per radio. If that's the case, if you're selling it for P dollars and it's costing you $30 to make it, if it's costing you $30 to make one radio and you're going to turn around and sell it for P dollars, then the difference, whatever it is, must be your profit per radio. So therefore, this means therefore, therefore, P minus 30 must represent P minus $30 must represent profit per radio. Because we are selling it for P dollars, for example, if P happens to be, for example, if P happens to be 37, it costs us $30 to make one radio, the $7 would represent our profit. If you turn around and sell the radio for $45, the P would be 45, the difference is 15, the $15 would be the profit per radio. If that's the profit per radio, since we are selling 500 of them, this in turn implies that our total profit, our total profit must equal, our total profit must equal 500 times the profit per radio, right here, profit per radio, P minus 300. That's it, we're almost done. And we want this quantity, 500 times P minus 30, to be more than 8,200. Let's pick up from here. This is the total required profit. Let's pick up right from here. Let, let's pick up right from here. This is the required profit, and this is, this represents the total. This represents the total profit, and this total profit of 500 times p minus 30 is required to be more than 8,200 dollars. I'm going to drop the dollar sign. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get rid of dollar sign here. But well, here we need it, but not not here. This is understood that this side is dollar and this side is dollar. All we have to do now is solve it. That's all. Let's do it then, shall we? Open the parenthesis. 500 times P is going to give us 500, 500 P minus 500 times 30. 5 threes are 15. And we have 1, 2, 3 zeros. 1, 2, 3 zeros. 
and that has to be greater than or equal to 8200. With me so far? Let's, let's pick up. I know what I dropped, I dropped my red marker and now I need it. Just give me one brief second. I need to pick it up because I want to show you we want to be able to see the three zeros here. These are the three zeros here. 30, 30 has this one zero right here and the 500 has two zeros. These are the three zeros that appear here. One, two and three. And five times three is 15. Let's add, let's add 15,000 to both sides. And I don't like the way it came out. I'm going to rewrite it. 15,000. The digits have to line up. This 15,000 is going to cancel out, which means 500p has to be more than 15,000 plus 8,000. 15,000 plus 10,000 would have been 25,000, so it's 23,200. Let's divide both sides by 100. Let's divide both sides by 100. If you divide both sides by 100, these two zeros are going to knock out and these two zeros are going to knock out. So we're almost there, which means P has to be greater or equal to 232 divided by 5. Are you still with me? We have to divide by 5. Don't divide by 5. Don't divide by 5. It's much easier to divide something by 10. If somebody asks you to divide something by 5, play a trick. What you do is take the quantity and multiply top and bottom by 2. It's much easier to divide anything by 10. 232 divided by times 2 is 464. 400 464 over 10 and now of course this we can very easily divide that quantity 464 divided by 10 is simply four dollars and sixty four cents or rather forty six dollars we have to move it by one place we are not going to sell the radio for four dollars you understand those days are gone forty six dollars and forty cents that is the required price for radio in order to assure that we have a profit of at least 8,200. Not at least, yes, we have a profit of greater than 8,200. Not at least, at least means it can be equal to. We don't want equal to in order to make sure that we have a profit of more than 8,200. And that was it. $46.40. $46.40. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.